Hi, this is Eric with Cat Avenue, and today is part one of a 2D ducting input series. Today we're going to be starting out with PDF underlays. Basically what that means is importing a PDF into AviCAD and then using that PDF as a background. In this example, I'm going to be doing some ducting over the top of it. Uh, so I just wanted to show you that process. I'm going to be doing this video in a two to three part just to keep each segment short. So let's get started. So first things first, when you first open AviCAD uh, via the, uh, the shortcut on the desktop, you're going to be using a template we don't want. For those of you in metric, you can go ahead and use this. Um, but for those imperial, we need to close this out and we need to go up here and choose the new icon here and then come down and choose the uh, imperial template. This one is metric. Uh, once that's open, now we can go ahead and come up to the uh, insert pull down. If you don't see this uh, toolbar up here, it's actually called a menu bar. Just type in menu bar and then make sure this is set to one and that will turn it on. Come up here to the insert, attach underlay, PDF underlay. Uh, here I have several PDFs in here. I'm going to be choosing this one. Um, pay attention to your cursor and the command line. Uh, it's asking for a page number. I'm going to enter um, one, which is the page number inside your PDF. And then the insert point would be zero comma zero comma zero, which places it at the, uh, the origin, the X, Y down here. Now at this point, it's going to be asking for a scale factor. And I'm just going to enter one because I really don't know that quite yet and then rotation would also be zero. And then as you can see, it puts the, uh, the PDF in here. Interesting enough, this PDF is, uh, you can see if you zoom down on it, is dimensioned in metric um, units, which provides a good example of how you can even scale a drawing, even if it's in metric. So um, this might be useful for other things as well. So if we come down here and we measure something that we know we need to be at a certain uh, dimension, like a counter is always at uh, two feet. So if we do a distance command and we scale it, we can't snap to the PDF. We can zoom down into it and then uh, roughly place our point in there. And then the second point would be here. And our distance is half an inch. So, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking the distance of the counter and then dividing it by half inch. So if we do the math, then that would be 24 divided by 0.5, which is 48. So 48 is going to be the scale factor that we're going to be using to enlarge this PDF. So in order to enlarge it, we just click on it. And then while we're highlighting the grip, we press the space bar, toggle into the scale command, and then enter in the scale factor of 48, which is going to enlarge that floor plan. So now that the floor plan's enlarged, we can just check it by going down to the same area where we were and then doing a distance command again. As you can see, it's nearly um, you know, T feet there. Like I said, you can't really accurately snap to a, a PDF that's been brought in like this, uh, but you can certainly uh, do distance commands on it just to roughly figure out if you're in the ballpark. So once we've brought the uh, PDF in, we can click on it, highlight it, and then come back over here to our properties palette and for the fade value, it's just a percentage. So if we want to fade it by 40%, we can um, do that. Or if we need it to be higher. Yeah. You can mess with this value a little bit, just depending on what you need. Um, and now that it's faded out, we can just create our layers that we're going to be needing to put our ducting down. 
And the way I'm going to be doing this is I'm just going to be using some construction layers. So if I go into my layer command, and by the way, um, I just did a video on commands, so have a look at that. Um, there's uh, roughly 50 plus commands that I go over and show you how to use. I'm going to leave a link at the bottom of the video. Let's go ahead and create a new layer here. And we're just going to call it, we're just going to leave this as layer one. It's a construction layer, so we don't really care too much about naming it right now. And let's go into that layer, because right now we're in layer zero. And now we can just start drawing our construction lines in. I'm going to be placing my heating and cooling unit over this area in the hall. So if I type in REC for rectangle, I put my first point in. And at this point, I'm going to use the at um, box there. You can see uh, the at is basically saying at x value comma y value. So the x value is going to be going over four feet comma and then up two feet. So that gives us a four by two uh, rectangle. You can see there. And I can zoom down. I'm going to go ahead and use my move command and then just move that into where I need it. Um, next I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that my O snaps are set correctly. I got midpoint and endpoint turned on which is good for this. I might use perpendicular. So let me go ahead and run a line down this way. You'll notice my ortho is not turned on so I can go down here just like that and then enter in let's say 24 feet over would be my first construction line and this construction line is basically my ducting run do a T here later so I'm gonna do a, another construction line going down this way and come down uh, 16 feet and then this way uh, I'll just come over uh, you know, six feet or so. If I wanted to, I could just do another line here and then come down into this room 16 feet. In today's video, I'm just going to be showing you a little bit about what the ducking menus do. And I'm not actually going to be uh, doing any snapping today. That's for the next video. But let's go up here into the main ducting dialog. Here I have a, a draw view selected here. Now here I can draw just straight duct, uh, flanges, uh, sections, you know, duct runs, end views, uh, and so forth. So there's all kinds of draw modes here. Um, I can specify my uh, diameter and so forth and the ducting shape that I'm going to be using. And down here I can select my flanges as needed. Right now I have it just selected to none. Also real important is the options button. And this is where I can turn on my 3D. Uh, I can turn on bill of materials. I can put uh, you know, center lines in my drawing, uh, repeat the last command, put the uh, label of my, uh, the size of my pipe in, and all kinds of other things as well. So, and also my layers, I can adjust my layers as needed. Uh, I, for now, I'm just leaving these all uh, by default and letting MetQ take care of that for me. And then, here you can use the match button to match the properties of a certain piece of duct so that you can quickly change you know, your, your ducting based on a current piece that's already in your drawing. And here we can add a custom element to our bill of materials just by picking something in our drawing and assigning it to the schedule if we need, such as maybe a heating and cooling unit would be a good example for that. These boxes are really just for, you know, the, again, the bill of material uh, specs. 
The other um, modules you'll find are to the right of the main ducting module. This one is for your elbows. You'll notice down here there's also draw view mode. You want to make sure to pay attention to what this is currently selected at. Um, then more options here, the same as in the main menu. Here's your T module. Uh, the size one and size two, we refer to this uh, icon here. You got your S1 and S2 here. Your T1, T2, and T3 are all associated with this box here. Um, you got the layers, you got the 3D draw mode. Same thing here with your flanges. You can select different configurations for your flanges here. Then we have our transform utility here. We have the size and depth, the length, whether or not we're doing, you're doing a plan or a front view. The transformation types here, insulation, just like the main menu. Whether the type be concentric or eccentric, up and down, and different options here as well. Here's our offsets uh, module where, where we can specify the size and the, the actual offset values here. Um, again, same kind of thing going on with the shape and insulation and the connections here. All these menus are very, very similar to each other. Um, we have the branch utility here, which allows the size and length here and the different types here. Um, and the rest is the same as the other dialogues. This one's a little bit different. This is the uh, diffuser utility. You can specify the types here and the direction. And based on that, it will change the symbol. Um, the size and the ratings and so forth. Here we have our dampers utility. And you can choose a different damper types here. Uh, whether or not you want blades and housings turned on, uh, the, the type of um, damper you'll need as far as the shape and then the actual size. The accessories menu is probably the most different dialogues. Lots of different MISC um, types of objects that you'll need. Here we have a flexible duct in each of these is really their own utility. So the flexible duct, which we use quite a bit. And uh, here you can find your different air handling units and so forth. So we'll be uh, seeing you in the next video and have a great day, bye.